Hello, sisters. Welcome to the Sacred Medicine Podcast, weaving powerful, soulful practices into functional medicine. Step into this beautiful space of devotion and explore everything from nurturing foods, rituals, sexuality, and awakening your innate sensuality. It is time to own your radiance. This is the Sacred Medicine Podcast. You are listening to the Sacred Medicine Podcast. I am your host, Margaret Romero, and today we are talking all about chronic sinus infections. So I have worked so many years in urgent care setting. I've also worked in internal medicine and failing practices. And my gosh, sinus infections are one of the most common things that someone comes in to see me for. And what do they want? They want an antibiotic, right? And what I've also seen in the past is that people will keep coming back because the infection doesn't go away. And so they keep getting more and more antibiotics, stronger ones and stronger ones. And this just doesn't, for some people, it just doesn't seem to go away. So today what I want to talk to you about are some of the things that you not only can do to help with these recurrent sinus infections, because we're going to look at it in a, from a different angle, from a functional medicine perspective, and also some of the things that may be causing it. And one of the things that may surprise you is that it's more than likely not caused by bacteria which is why at times you need to get more and more antibiotics because we're not, you know, you may not be, you may not have bacteria that's actually causing this to begin with. So let's run down some of the things that may actually be causing your sinus infections to begin with. Number one, cigarette smoke. So if you're around anyone that smokes, if you have a partner that smokes, If you smoke, this can easily trigger recurrent sinus infections. Number two, poor immune function. So if you have any issues, you've got chronic illness, maybe you have an autoimmune condition, or even if you don't, if you're someone that gets sick often, um, feels very tired, and you overall just, eh, aren't feeling as vital as you used to. You may be dealing with some underlying issues that you may or may not know about. You know, you're just not feeling your best. You feel like you get sick a lot. You know what I mean? So this is someone with somewhat of a maybe not poor immune function, but maybe your immunity just isn't as strong as it used to be. Another thing is mold exposure. You've heard me talk about mold so much on this podcast. It's definitely up there with one of the reasons why you may be getting, you know, chronic sinus infections. Not only that, congestion, lots of sneezing, runny nose, things like that. That mold will definitely cause these issues to happen. Next one is fungal infections, right? Now, studies show that even given, at times, even given antifungal medications may not do it, may not get rid of your sinus infection. So, and then I've also heard some people kind of treat for fungal infections and sometimes it helps with with the with this recurrent issue that you may be getting, but I firsthand have not treated someone with like Diflucan and gotten good results. So I can't say that for sure, but there is for sure fungal infections that could be recurring or in the cavities of your sinuses that may be causing these recurrences. The next is viral 
You know, this could absolutely be a viral infection, not bacterial. And of course, when you throw antibiotics at a virus, it's not going to do a damn thing. (laughs) And then the next one is, and this may be, this is the one that actually is my favorite topic and it's your digestion. And so when somebody has digestive issues, you've got maybe gas, bloating, diarrhea, constipation, irritable bowel. You've got all of these issues. You also get recurrent sinus infections. There is a link between your digestion and your sinuses. So when when your digestion is off, like you've got all of those issues I just mentioned, and you get in sinus infections often, it's most likely stop focusing just on the, you know, sinuses 100% of the time because the issue is in your GI issue, you know, in your GI system, your digestion, your gut issues. That is where the sinuses are coming from and stemming from. And so to heal gut, you know, without having to go too deep in here, but in order to heal the gut, you know, a, a very comprehensive stool test needs to be performed. And then once we know what those results are, we're able to then eradicate what's going on. Maybe you have a parasite, maybe you've got overgrowth of bad bacteria. Maybe you don't have enough of enzymes to help break down your food. There's so many things that um, the stool sample will tell us for the the results will tell us. Okay, so let's go back. Can it be digestion? Absolutely. Is there a link? Yes. So you want to be able to fix what's going on there, heal the gut, sinus infections, resolve. And, you know, what I've been seeing is so much in practice in the past when I was first... um, where was I? My first job as an NP was working at for a private practice out of based out of Columbia University. And it was the Columbia physicians, their private practices were held in um in Midtown East. And I loved it. It was my first job. I loved it. <laughs> but I it was not functional medicine, obviously. That didn't come for a little bit. But initially, I remember specifically this one woman that came in. She was overweight. She did not appear to be super healthy. And she kept coming in because she was always having some kind of infection. I remember this so vividly. And I remember her coming in and it was like her third or fourth time within a maybe two or three month period, the pain in her sinuses and wanting another antibiotic that it only helped for a couple of days and that's it. And now it's back. And I remember the doctor just kept writing different prescriptions, a stronger one or a different one and nasal sprays and steroids and that that's just not the answer, though it's so common in traditional medicine, you know, have a sinus infection, give augmentin, give amoxicillin, give the patient whatever they say that works for them. <laughs> so, and, you know, maybe it's z pack. Oh, I need two packs of z pack for that one so much as well. But no, the answer is not in the antibiotic the answer is looking outside. What's What else is going on with you? You having any digestive issues? Okay, let's address those. And also, I want to also talk about this other study that I read about. It's actually pretty cool. It's pretty cool. This is something you can do at home. So let's say you don't have digestive issues, okay? And you, you want to know, like, what can you do? What can you do from home? All right, there's going to be two things here. One you can easily do. And no, actually both of them you can easily do. So there was a study that showed 
than irrigation of your nasal passages. With 1%, Johnson's Baby Shampoo. Yeah, Johnson's Baby Shampoo actually helped 60% of the people who used it. They state that they had significant improvement in their sinus infections, in their pain. And so, now, have I personally tried this? No, I don't get sinus infections, but I have not used this on any any of my patients. This is something I, I just researched. I looked it up. And it's actually, it's, it's, there's several studies on this. And so, so it kind of works. The, the baby shampoo kind of works as a, um, it, it, you know how kind of slippery the shampoo is, you know, the substance when you mix it with some water, it's very, it's very sticky. So it kind of works as going in and sort of flushing things out in a very different way than just saline would. Now, saline in itself is great. I love like um, if you've got a sore throat, you gargle with warm salt water. And so I think that spraying nasal sprays work maybe to an extent, but a lot of people tend to use that and they still don't feel good. So it's possible that this, I mean, 60% of people said they felt better. Okay. It's worth trying. Johnson's baby shampoo. You mix it with some water. You um, irrigate your your nose. Some nasal irrigation. And it works as a surfactant. So it kind of makes everything sort of slippery and then flushes out the bacteria. The other thing is something called, and I hope I'm pronouncing this right, um, Slear? Exlear? Exlear. <laughs> I don't know. It's X C L E A R. No, I'm sorry. Wait, is it X C or X L E A R? It's a nasal spray. And it is something that you can certainly buy over the counter. I'm sorry, I spelled it wrong. It's X L E A R. X L E A R. Slear? X Lear? X Lear. Maybe that's how you pronounce it. It's a nasal spray. And the reason why this product works, it's really cool actually, it's it's because it has xylitol in it. Isn't that interesting? It has xylitol. And so if you don't know what xylitol is, it's a form, it's it's a sugar. It's a sugar alcohol. And... And it's sort of very similar to kind of like stevia. It's a sugar replacement. Stevia is one, xylitol is another. But in this particular study, this xylitol was used. So therefore, now this product was created. And let me spell it again, X-L-E-A-R. I'll have it in the show notes so you know what I'm talking about. And this is over the counter. This is over the counter. You know, how easy is this? Use this. I would not use the ones that contain like the steroid, the Flonase, things like that, because I'm not a huge supporter of steroid unless you're having, you know, um, shortness of breath. You've got, you're in the midst of an asthma attack, um, you have some type of hoarseness or your, not hoarseness, if you're having, like you're starting to lose your voice a little and you're a singer and you need to perform, that's the only time I'll give steroid. Or during an acute situation, of course. But if we can avoid the steroids up the nose for a bit, let's just switch to this. It's over the counter. Really easy. Get a little Johnson baby shampoo. You know, you can mix that with the water and um, just 1% and then see how you do. And that just, like I said, it clears out. You can do one or the other. Just try one at a time to see how it goes. But, you know, of course, you know, going back to all of the list that I was talking about, poor immune function. All right, well, what about 
you know, if you're dealing with a chronic illness, um, have you, have you gotten your nutrients checked in your blood work? You know, if you've got mold exposure, can you move out of the situation? Can you deal with the mold? I mean, don't live in the mold. It's the last thing you want is to live in the mold. You know, maybe moving out of the moldy house will clear all your sinus issues. You know, if you've got, if it's viral, well then let's do some, some really good vitamin C, you know, take some zinc, things like that. That'll help boost your immunity as well. It'll help you from getting infections. When the body is chronically ill, it has a really hard time fighting infections. It becomes overwhelmed. And it's also, it can be, you can have low reserves when you have a chronic illness. Your body's using up all its nutrients. And if you're depleted and no one's ever checked your B12, vitamin D, zinc, magnesium levels, and they're super in the bucket, which let me tell you, most people are. Most people are. So that's the case then start taking some supplements, some really good supplements. Not with the preservatives, not with all these colors in them that are not good for you. You want some good professional grade supplements. Let's see, what else? And, okay, yeah, let's talk about something called biofilms. So biofilms are... It happens when bacteria, viruses, they all like kind of come together and they stick on surfaces. It could be anywhere in the body, in your nose, in your gut, anywhere, really. And anywhere along your digestive tract, you know, and, and also the sinus cavities. So you can have these they're this biofilm and it's like slimy films of bacteria and so they adhere to like your mucous membranes and they colonize they just grow and sometimes these biofilms are really resistant to antibiotics those antibiotics can't penetrate that that slimy like it can't go in and, and kill what's, what's in there. And they grow and they grow and they grow. And sometimes they dis- dislodge from the mucous membrane and then they travel. Then they, they adhere to other things and then they cause havoc and infection. And this poses a, a really big problem because antibiotics will not do a damn thing to these biofilms. Can't kill them. Cannot kill it. So, if you have biofilms in your sinuses, in your sinus cavities, antibiotics, you can throw a million antibiotics to the whole situation. Nothing's going to happen, and you're not going to get any better. So there's a few things that you can do to get rid of these biofilms, if, in fact, you do have them. Now, I would consider someone that gets recurrent infections without feeling any better Now, look, yeah, you may say, oh, yeah, you know what? I have sinus infections all the time, and they have to put me on all these antibiotics every year. I'm on like two, three different courses of antibiotics. Every couple of months, I have another sinus infection, then another one, and then another one. Well, let's go back to that list. Are you, you know, do you have any exposure to mold, to cigarette smoke? You know, maybe this is a fungal infection, Maybe your immunity is low. Start taking some supplements. Like I said, vitamin C, zinc, you know, get your vitamin D levels checked. Do you need magnesium? Like, let's just like bump up the, like your immunity to fight off all of these invading like fungus or is it, you know, mold? Is it, what is it? So rather than living on very low reserves of nutrients, let's, boost them up so you're able to fight these things off, right? All right, so a couple of things that can help if you do, in fact, may have biofilms. Um, Take digestive enzymes. It helps to break them down. I love me some digestive enzymes. I take them before all of my meals. It helps to digest your foods. Most people are very depleted. You know, we need to have enzymes that break down our foods. 
And when we don't have enough enzymes, then we are not being able to break down our food and not digesting well. We can easily develop gas and bloating and all kinds of things. So that's one. Probiotics are really good. And xylitol. So um, it comes in powder form. There's also gum with xylitol. There is, you know, if you use, I don't know, stevia in your coffee, change it to xylitol. And like I said, um, buy that over-the-counter Zlear or whatever, I don't know how to pronounce it, X-L-E-A-R, nasal spray. It has xylitol in it. There is, now, if you feel like there may be a more of a systemic thing, there are supplements, but... um, I don't know. I feel like you would need a practitioner to get you through that because you're going to start detoxing and you're not going to feel good because once these things start to die off, you're not going to feel great. And I don't feel that it would support you if I just gave you a whole list of supplements to buy and your your body's not ready to, to do that type of detox. You know, you, if your body, let me tell you something. If you are suffering from a chronic illness, and you are suddenly put your body through a detox to get rid of biofilms. You know what biofilms are? It's like viruses, bacteria, all kinds of things put together, and it's slimy, it sticks everywhere, and once you start killing them and your body's not ready, you're gonna you're not gonna feel good and it's not good for your body. It just isn't. Maybe you can't even clear out toxins. So it wouldn't be beneficial for me to start giving, you know, supplements because I just, I I don't, it may not work well for you if your body's not prepared to do detoxification. It just, it may not be. And you may not even, your detoxification pathways may not even be working right. And then everything is going to recirculate in your body. No, I can't do it. I'm sorry, but I can't share it because I think it's too, it would be too detrimental to you. You need some, a provider to help you through that. And let me tell you, it's not conventional medicine. I'm going to tell you that right now. You think that your PCP or your specialist or the, um, or better yet, the ENT is in about biofilms necessarily? They may. I mean, yes. But what, are they going to know? about, um, may, they may know about Herxheimer reaction, which is when you really feel like crap when these bugs start dying off. They have the toxins of their own when they die. So um, I don't know. Maybe they do know about all the detoxification pathways and how to support them and support you through detoxification. But I think that will be um You'll just need to find, find like a functional medicine person, naturopath, um, integrative medicine person, provider, practitioner, and they'll help you with that. That's only if you, if we think that you actually do have biofilms. So, all right, that was my talk about biofilms, some of the things that you can take for it. Um, side note, side note here antihistamines, which I know you guys take that because I see it so much. And when you've got sinus infections, sometimes you think it may be related to your allergies and maybe they will, they could be certainly, but I do want to tell you a little something. Excessive use of antihistamines, chronic use of it has actually been associated with dementia. So why don't we, rather than continuing to just throw, throw drugs at something, at sinus infections, at chronic sinus conditions, why don't we treat at the core? Maybe you've got digestive issues. Get that fixed. Maybe your immune system, you don't eat well, you don't take supplements, you get sick a lot. Well, let's talk about that. Go get some blood work. Where are those deficiencies? Get some good supplements. Start eating better. Sleep good. And, but my God, if you're in mold, girlfriend, move 
get another job because it is not worth your health. It really isn't. I do want to say one thing though. Um, when it comes to also, when it comes to sinus, recurrent sinus infections, it's possible that you may also have polyps. Okay. And at times, if you were to go, a lot of people have gone to see ear, nose and throat people for these recurrent infections. And I don't necessarily think that in, you know, antibiotic after antibiotic after antibiotic is the best thing for you, because as you can see, it may not even be caused by bacteria. But if you, most ENTs will actually possibly request a CAT scan of your sinuses and then maybe see polyps in there and then say we have to remove them. So I would say if you think that, oh yeah, well look, the minute I get rid of those polyps, I'm never going to have sinus infections again. Mm, I don't know about that. It's possible. It's possible that it may help to relieve some things, but if you still have gut issues, it's not going to help your gut whatsoever. If you're still exposed to mold, it's not going to help the mold issue. If it's a fungal infection, I don't care if you remove your polyps, they're, they're, you may still get recurrent fungal infection or, you know, if fungus isn't treated or if you don't try to boost your immune system, these things are still going to come back because I see this in practice too. Person goes in, gets their polyps removed because the doctor's like, oh my God, you have so many polyps in here. We got to get rid of it. This is what's causing everything. You go, you get it done. By the way, it is not a fun procedure. It is not fun. They have to go in there, remove the polyps, and it's just, it's not fun. I'm just going to say that. I've never had it done. But I've just heard from so many patients. And guess what? A month goes by, maybe two. They come back in and they say, yeah, I think I got another sinus infection. I don't know what happened. I mean, I had the polyps removed. I thought they said I wasn't going to ever get infections again. And that's because the root of what was causing the infection to begin with has never been resolved. Removing polyps is not going to help your digestion. So, and it's not going to improve your immune system. So that's not the answer. It's not the answer. Okay. So I hope this helps you. I hope this shines a light as to what may be causing your chronic sinus infections, but it's not 100, certainly not 100% of the time. Is it bacteria? No. As you can see, there's so many other different reasons why you may be getting this. And are you, do you have digestive issues? Address that. Get a stool test, a very comprehensive one, not the one that you send in to Quest or LabCorp because those don't tell you anything. It just tests you for like a couple of things. That's it. If you want a stool kit, which is typically five pages of results, contact me and I can drop ship one to you and get down to the bottom of what's going on. Because let me tell you, your immune system is housed in your gut, in your digestion. And when that is off, not your digest, your digestive system, I should say, your gut. If your gut is off, gas, bloating, diarrhea, constipation, IBS, was it, have you been given that diagnosis? That means that they don't know what the hell's going on with you. <laughs> and then they give you, oh, you got constipation, take my Lanta. Oh, you have diarrhea. Okay, well then take this, um, take this medication, it will bulk you up. Without addressing what the hell is really going on down there. So, I hope this shines a light. I hope you all feel better. You got a couple of over-the-counter things you can start with. And I wish you the best. And I will talk to you all next week. Bye for now.